Greetings, Mount Calvary Baptist Church family and friends. My name is Pastor Rose from Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Mullica Hill, New Jersey, and we are excited, delighted, and so happy that you have decided to join with us today uh, on this service. We pray that God is keeping you safe, and we pray that your hearts and minds are open to be able to receive a word from God. We now will have a selection. God bless you. Amen. We hope that you enjoyed that. We are now going to have a word from our First Lady, Minister Rose. So open up your hearts, your minds, get ready to receive a word that we can all use and apply to our lives today. Hello everyone and grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our scripture text will be coming from Revelations chapter 2 verses 1 to 7 and I'll be reading from the Contemporary English Version. And it reads, this is what you must write to the angel of the church in Ephesus. I am the one who holds the seven stars in my right hand, and I walk among the seven gold lampstands. Listen to what I say. I know everything you have done, including your hard work, and how you have endured. I know you won't put up with anyone who was evil. 
When some people pretended to be apostles, you tested them and found out that they were liars. You have endured and gone through hard times because of me, and you have not given up. But I do have something against you, and it is this. You don't have as much love as you used to. Think about where you have fallen from and then turn back and do as you did at first. If you don't turn back, I will come and take away your lampstand. But this is one thing you are doing right. You hate what the Nicolaitans are doing and so do I. If you have ears, listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. I will let everyone who wins the victory eat from the life-giving tree in God's wonderful garden. My topic today is the first love of the black church. The first love of the black church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you on this today with a grateful heart saying thank you. Thanking you for life, for health and strength and for all that you continue to do for us. Now God, I'm asking that you would be with us for the next few moments. That you would open up our hearts and our minds. That we can receive all that you have for us on this day. I'm asking you now Lord to anoint me a fresh God that the words that I speak will fall on fertile soil. We thank you. We give you praise, glory and honor. In your name we pray. Amen. The first love of the black church. Today, I would like to take the time to celebrate the last day of Black History Month. Black History Month and the black church is for all people, not a particular ethnic or racial group, but for all of God's children. Even though my topic today is centered around the black church, this message is for all of God's people serving in any capacity of his church. We are all a part of God's history, no matter what color skin we are. We take out this time because we believe history is important and we are all a part of history. When we look at the biblical record, we see that history plays an important role in the development of God's children. History is a source of faith. From history, we can learn what God has done for others and have faith that he is able to do the same thing for us. When Moses tried to give the children of Israel reasons to trust God, he begins his writing not with the Exodus story, but rather with the historical book called Genesis. That tells the story of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. History is also a source of hope. Daniel, while living behind enemy lines, seeks a reason for hope. He does not search the future, but the historical writings of Jeremiah. History is a source of understanding. When the Apostle Paul addresses the need for a savior, he does not use personal or present sins, but connects the need of a savior back to the first man, Adam, and the original sin. Finally, history is a source of vision. The vision of Mount Calvary Baptist Church is grounded upon the vision of God for his church. Not only is history generally important, but black history is important particularly. Black history teaches us about the numerous contributions made by individuals of African descent. Contributions in the fields of science, politics, world affairs, and education. Lessons about hard work, faithfulness, and you can make it if you try. The history of the black church can also teach us a lot. It teaches us about faith in God in spite of conditions and situations, about the power of prayer, about holding on to God's unchanging hand, and the amazing grace that God has shown toward us. The black church was born in slavery, reared in segregation, and discrimination. Now, in the prime of his life, the black church is standing at a crossroads between its way of its former oppressors and the ways of its ancestors. The choice we make will determine our future. In 1903, W.E.B. Du Bois wrote a book entitled The Souls of Black Folk. In that book, Du Bois makes the statement that the problem of the 20th century is the problem of the color line. From a purely psychological perspective, we can say today the problem of the 21st century is still the problem of the color line. The line has just gotten a little browner. However, from a spiritual perspective, 
the problem of the black church in the 21st century is the problem of the love line. When we examine John's letter to the church of Edifus, we find some interesting similarities between the church of Edifus and the black church today. The first thing we notice is that the Lord says, I know thy works and labors and patience. We can be assured that God sees and knows the works and efforts extended by the black church. Amen. The Lord watches over the black church. He takes note of our works of gratitude. The Lord sees how we work, not in order to gain salvation, but out of the thankfulness for the free gift of salvation. Amen. The Lord knows that the black church have worked long hours under some of the most difficult situations. He knows our work of faith, our labor of love, and our patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, the black church has been busy working hard in the areas of evangel evangelism, spreading the gospel message to generations after generations, and in the area of missions by visiting the sick and shut in, by offering religious instructions about love, forgiveness, grace, and mercy. The black church have told and retold the old, old story about God's love for humanity. It has been busy in civil matters such as the abolishment of slavery, the civil rights movement, and recently Black Lives Matter. The black church have organized voting rights and human rights, making members concerned and active even today. The black church has worked hard in the areas of education, teaching their young to read, and by offering affordable childcare. Yes, the black church has worked in personal development, developing faith in times of sickness and death and patience in times of injustice. It has nurtured marriages and offered spiritual healing in the times of divorce. It has been busy working hard, training leaders and giving people much needed opportunities to develop skills and talents. You can rest. The black, shore, the black church can rest in the assurance that the Lord sees and knows our works. Amen. The black church has come a mighty long way, but the black church still has a long way to go. Not only must the black church be involved in intercessory prayer, but the black church must also be involved in intercessory service. Amen. As technology grows in the African American community, we are getting further and further behind. As education becomes vital to the success of our young people, the church must be involved. As drugs are sweeping the black community and our young people are going to a jail campus more often than a college campus, the black church must be involved. Simply, the black church must stand in the gap. The black church must stand in the gap for single mothers. It must stand in the gap for the elderly. It must stand in the gap for the education of our youth. The black church have come a mighty long way, but the black church still have a mighty long way to go. You see, the soul of the black church rests upon its ability not only to get people out to vote, but teaching people the importance of voting and how to vote as we saw in this past election. As leaders in the black church, we need not only tell parents to train up their child in the way they should go, but also take the lead in parenting. Not only telling children that education is important, but taking the lead in after school programs, tutorial programs, and computer classes. Yes, the black church must take the lead in teaching its young not only to be consumers, but producers. Not only employees, but employers. Not only spenders, but savers. Training them to about making money, but also investing in finances. It's time. The time has come for the black church to move to the next level. Yes, the black church has come a mighty long way, but the black church must never become satisfied with just getting out of the Egypt of equality, but the black church must continue to strive to reach the promised land of equality. As with the church of Atticus, the same is for the black church. Although their works were good and commendable, their motivation was not pure. Not only must our ends be excellent, 
the means to which we reach the, those ends must be also excellent. Despite all the good that the church of Edifice had done, they have left their first love. This can be described as a sad departure. The black church stands on the threshold of this same sad departure. The distinction between leaving and losing love is important. Something can be lost quite by accident, but leaving it is a deliberate act. As well, when we lose something, we do not know where to find it. But when we leave something, we do know where to find it. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 to 3 tells us, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not loved, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can phantom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not loved, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not loved, I gain nothing. Without love, all is vain. You see, this church left their reason for existence. And when a church leaves love, or when that love grows cold, they have left their very reason for their existence. You leave love, you leave all. The church must go back, go back to the altar, fall down on her knees, and go back to her first love. These are two things the black church must do in order to regain her rightful place and her rightful influence in the world today. The first is remember what does this Black History Month does for us. That is why Dr. Whitson saw the need for this month. We need to remember where we were and who bought you with a pillar of cloud by day and with a pillar of fire by night. Remember who picked you up even when you were down. Remember who was your friend when you were friendless. Amen. Growing up, I remember the people praying, Dear Lord, take me back to the place where I first believed. You see, the black church needs to remember from where we come and who brought us safe thus far. Amen. The second thing is we must repent. Repent means to turn away from and to turn toward. The black church must turn away from the lures of this world and turn toward the God of our weary years. Turn away from the false gods of money and turn toward the God of our silent tears. Amen. Finally, this passage ends with a promise. The promise is made to individuals, to him that overcometh. God knows the soul of the black church is made up of the souls of all people and makes the promise to all. The promise is a promise of return, restoration, and reward. The promise is a promise of a return to Eden, a restoration to former position, and the reward of eternal life. This is meant both in the eternal sense of making it to heaven, but also in the sense of seeing that the effects of the curse roll back in our own lives through walking in Jesus, redeeming love. You see, paradise originally meant a garden of delight. Eventually, it came to mean the place where God lives, where God is that is paradise. So in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., we shall overcome because God is on our side. Even when technology is threatening to divide the haves from the have-nots, the black church shall overcome. Even when we feel like our lives doesn't matter, the black church shall overcome. Even though we are going through a pandemic, the black church shall overcome. Amen? Racial profiling, disproportional unemployment, the unjust criminal justice system, wars and rumors of wars shall not succeed in holding us down because the black church shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. The black church shall overcome because the God of the universe will deliver you out of financial bondage. I said the black church shall overcome because the promises of God are true true and you will reap what you sow. Amen. Amen. When a river like attendeth my soul, when sorrows like sea billows roll, 
Whatever my lot has taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. There in paradise, we, the black church, shall be with God as the bride of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And on that day, we will overcome and be with him forever. Amen. The first love of the black church. Before I close on today, I like to offer you the free gift of salvation. Jesus is our first love. If you are out there today and never experienced God's love and would like to accept him into your heart, today is your day. If you want to receive Jesus in your heart today, just simply repeat after me. Jesus, I accept you into my heart. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and I confess with my mouth that I'm a sinner saved by grace and that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. If you believe that in your heart today, you are saved. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We hope that you enjoy the word. And how many of us know that uh, we can't beat God's giving no matter how hard we try? God has given so much to us and we always want to make sure that we, we provide the opportunity for everyone to give back to God. And if you would like to do that, you can go to our website at mcbcmh.org and click the donate tab. Um, and feel free to have that opportunity to give back to God. We would also like to hear from you. Uh, maybe you are interested in membership or just have a prayer request. Uh, feel free to email us at Mount Calvary at spelled out mh at yahoo.com. And remember, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and our website. Uh, we hope that you can join with us throughout the week with the different activities that we have. We hope that you have been blessed, and God bless you.